Happy 4th of July weekends, everybody. We are back. It's my weekly free plant-based cooking class. My name is Cheryl Martinez from veganercooking.com. And today's recipe is Texas coleslaw. Now I chose this recipe for today because it's a great recipe to bring to cookouts. Everyone's going to cookouts right now this summer. And uh, this recipe is going to wow all of your guests, I promise. And um, uh, let's just see who's here so we can start saying hi to some people. Um, hello, Cobra. Hello, DJ Flipside. How are you guys? Happy 4th of July. Um, what are you guys up to this weekend? What's everyone doing for 4th of July weekend? Did you guys see some fireworks yet? Uh, tell, me, uh, tell me what the latest is, all right? Now, um, also, um, the, 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 the recipe ingredients for everything you need to make this is on my website, beginnercooking.com, but I'm gonna tell them, uh, tell you real quick exactly what you need in case you wanna make this with me live, okay? So you're gonna need cilantro, gar two garlic cloves, one jalapeno chili, some olive oil, red wine vinegar, lime juice, maple syrup, fajita seasoning, uh, freshly ground black pepper, green cabbage, red cabbage, an apple, some carrots, and some pecans. That's it. That's all you guys need to make this recipe with me live, okay? Hi, DJ San Juan. What's going on, sweetheart? Hi, B-Boy uh, Pinoy. What's up, guys? Happy 4th of July weekends. Tell me, what have you guys been up to this 4th of July weekend, huh? What has everyone been doing? What's, what's the latest? All right, guys, so if you wanna make this recipe with me live, you can go to coleslaw.beginnercooking.com and you can get all the ingredients and you have all the recipe details right there so you can follow along and we can make it with me at the same time, all right? Hi, Christian, hello, sweetheart. Uh, okay, DJ Samwan, he's go he said that he's going to a barbecue and drinking, okay, all right. <laughs> I hope you bring some vegan food to that barbecue and if you want, you can bring this coleslaw recipe. Um, so this recipe um, is really, really delicious because it has like a crunchy, tangy, spicy kind of vibe to it. It's not like traditional coleslaw. It's Texas coleslaw. So it's coleslaw with a twist. So it has um, some really, really nice flavors in it. And uh, it's such a simple recipe. You can make it in a matter of minutes. You're going to see today that we're going to make this super fast. All right. So this is my robot chef right here, aka my Thermomix. You can follow him on social media, at my robot chef. And uh, he's gonna be helping us cook today. But um, you can also make this in a food chopper. If you don't have my robot, you can still make this, all right? Your food chopper, your food processor, whatever you have. If you really need to chop it by hand, you could. But coleslaw is really great when it's really fine. So it's best to, um, to do it fine, all right, guys? All right, for some reason, I can't see the chat in face the Facebook chat. I'm trying to, okay, here we go. Ricky, what up, Ricky Corcoran? How are you? Hi, Steve Bird. You said you were surrounded by home-blown fireworks last night. No local fireworks displays in Florida. Yeah, yeah, you know, in New York, um, uh, they, uh, they canceled all the, the big, you know, Macy's fireworks thing that they normally do every year. And they just held some secret spots, some secret locations. So if you got lucky, you were able to see a little bit. Um, and guys, I have a very special surprise guest who I'm going to be featuring uh, during my class today. Um, he's not here right now, but as soon as he gets here, come here, baby. Come here, baby. I want to introduce you guys to my nephew, Mango. Now, please excuse Mango's haircut. This is a quarantine haircut. All right, guys. He hasn't been able to go to the groomer lately because of restrictions. But um, but he still looks cute as hell, right? This is Mango. He's going to be helping us today with the recipe. Uh, this this recipe is Mango approved, and um, this is my godson. This is my nephew, and he is visiting me. I haven't seen him since before the quarantine, guys. Since before the quarantine, it's been over three months since I've seen my nephew. So I'm really happy that he's going to be helping us out with today's recipe. All right. So everyone, say hi to Mango. <laughs> you can follow uh, Mango on social media too. Um, it's at, uh, at Mango Woof. All right. All right, guys. Who else is here? We got Mike Gone is here. 
uh, DC Card Buzz is here, DJ Gonzo is here, Laid Back Boy is here. Hey guys, happy 4th of July weekend. Do you like my hat? My dad actually gave me this hat. It's pretty fun, right? I'm in the spirit, we're in the spirit, we're in the zone. If you guys um, saw what I just posted, I posted a red, white, and blue frozen lemonade recipe on veganercooking.com that's uh, uh, perfect for 4th of July weekends if you're looking for a fun, frozen lemonade, super refreshing and uh, fits right in with the holiday. All right, guys, so we're going to get started. So we're making Texas coleslaw, all right? Texas coleslaw is this recipe. And if you want to make this recipe with me now or make it later, you can go to coleslaw.beginnercooking.com and, uh, and you can make this with us, all right? So my robot has all of the recipes preloaded via touchscreen. So he's going to help us help walk us through it right now. All right, so I'm just gonna go to my recipes, my collections for the class. And here's the coleslaw. So I'm gonna click start cooking. Now the first thing you need for this recipe is some fresh cilantro, all right? Hi, Joseph Collins. Hi, Ab Abdul. Hi, Mickey May. How are you, love? Hi, Wesh. Steve, you said Mango is quite a cute one. Yes, he is. And uh, he'll be making a few more appearances throughout the show, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> all right, guys, so you're gonna need some fresh cilantro. Half an ounce, all right? I love cilantro, and this is definitely an important ingredient in this recipe, so you don't wanna skip the cilantro, all right? So that's the first thing we're gonna add. Here we go, half an ounce of the cilantro. And what's so cool about my robot is he is actually weighing it as I put it in. There we go, that's half an ounce, right? just about right there. So now I'm gonna click next. The next ingredient we need for this is two garlic cloves. All right, guys? Are you with me? Who's, if you're making this recipe at the same time as me right now, comment in the chat, in the chat. Um, or if you're gonna make it later, uh, comment later, right? I wanna know who's making it now and who's making it later. So here are my garlic cloves, my two garlic cloves. We're gonna pop that in, I'm gonna click next. By the way, if you guys are watching this live, amazing. Um, but if you're watching the replay, put the hashtag replay in your comments so that I know it's a comeback later and uh, show you some love in the chat, all right? All right, guys. So the next thing, the next ingredient we need to add is um, one or two fresh jalapeno uh, chilies. All right, guys. So I'm gonna tell you a little story. I don't know who knows about hot pepper hands. If you if you if you know about hot pepper hands is comment that in the chat. If you've experienced hot pepper hands, tell me your experience because uh, mine was a really really bad one. The first time I ever uh, cut up chilies, I went and touched the seeds and the ribs myself with my fingers, and then literally my fingers felt like they were on fire for hours. So um, apparently um, you're supposed to wear gloves. When you, uh, when you touch peppers, so I actually pre-cut these for us with my gloves so I don't have to touch them and uh, burn myself and <laughs> go crazy during this class right now. But this is a very, very, very help, helpful tip. If you weren't aware, guys, you definitely want to... Um, you definitely want to use gloves when you remove the seeds and when you remove the ribs. And uh, actually, if you, just when you touch the inside in general, because if your skin comes into contact with the inside of this, you're in trouble, all right? So um, if you like things really spicy and really hot, you can actually leave some of the seeds or some of the ribs in, and because that's where most of the heat comes from in your chili peppers, all right? So if you want it extra hot, feel free to go ahead and leave some, some of the seeds and ribs, all right? So we're gonna pop that in there as that's our next step. All right, and we click next. Okay, who else is here? Maria just tuned in from Spain. Hello, love. Hi, guys. Guys, comments in the chats where you're tuning in from so I know where in the world everyone is located. All right. So we put the top on. Just let me show you guys real quick where we're at. We have the jalapeno chili pepper, we have the fresh cilantro, and we have the garlic cloves, right? That's where we are so far in the recipe, all right? We are making Texas coleslaw. It's the perfect cookout recipe to bring to all those summer barbecues and summer parties and 4th of July parties. So um, that's why I picked this recipe for today. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop all that together 
my robot's gonna chop that for us in just three seconds. And if you don't have my robot chef, you can do this in your food chopper or your food presser, processor. Hi, Marie. Oh, Marie is here. I'm so happy Marie is here. Marie, we missed you the last couple weeks. We really did. We love having you here in the chats. So, um, so, uh, so welcome back. Welcome back, sweetheart, and happy 4th of July weekend. All right, so I'm going to turn my dial here on my robot. Two, one. And in just three seconds, I'm going to show you what that looks like now. We have chopped our cilantro, our garlic, and our jalapeno chili, okay? Oh, the smell of fresh cilantro. Ooh, <coughs> oh, that's spicy. <laughs> Woo! The cilantro smells, smells amazing, but I just got a kick of that chili in my throat. Ooh, my. This is smelling really good already. You guys see that? You guys see that? Oh, the connection was bad? Oh, darn. Jacqueline, is the connection bad on my end or is it bad on your end? Let me know because I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm not in my typical kitchen. Normally I do my live streams from my home in New York City, but I am out here visiting my family right now. This is my mom's kitchen. You can see, you see this is my mom's beautiful kitchen. So um, I'm still uh, fine tuning their Wi-Fi connection. So let me know if you guys um, are having any trouble with the connection or if you can see and hear me okay, all right? <laughs> hi, Jack Cruz. Hi, hi Nick, uh, Nick, Nicole Lem Nicola Mente. I can't pronounce your name. Oh my God. Hi, Marissa. Marissa's here from Spain. My Spain family's here. I miss you guys. I love you guys. Thank you for coming and hanging with me every week. Marissa, Nudia, Alex, and Maria. Love you guys. All right. All right, guys. So the next step is to add one ounce of olive oil. All right. So here is our olive oil, and I'm dropping that in. And my robot chef is measuring that for me. He makes my life so easy. And it's also super helpful to do these classes with you guys. So I don't have to worry so much about making any mistakes because he is uh, talking us through the recipes. Hi, Michael Max. Oh, Jacqueline, you like my outfit, right? Fourth of July theme. It's Fourth of July weekends. Everyone's happy this weekend. Everyone's excited. Everyone's partying this weekend. Just make sure you party safe, guys, and bring your masks to the party, all right? Don't forget to wear your mask if you're around people, okay? All right, so after the olive oil, we're going to add some red wine vinegar, all right? So that's the next step. You're going to need half an ounce of red wine vinegar. Here we go, my robot is measuring it. <laughs> and uh, I think Mango is back to make another guest appearance. Mango, you wanna say hi to our new viewers? Yes, yes, here we go, here we go. Mango is distracted by, by our other dog, Harley. Okay, all right, all right, you guys can play. I'll bring you back on camera later, please don't. Please don't run into my, into my tripod stands. Thank you, Marie. Hi, Michael Max, how are you? How are you guys? Hi, S Marines. Hi, Keds B. Hello guys, happy 4th of July weekend. Is everyone partying this weekend? Is everyone partying hard? Is everyone partying safe? That's the real question, right? Who's, who actually wore a mask to their 4th of July party? Comments in the chats if you did. You get extra bonus points for you. All right. Next step is to add one ounce of lime juice, all right? You guys are going to love this coleslaw. This is going to be the best coleslaw you've ever made, all right? I promise you that. Here we go. And we are squeezing that lime juice right in here. Awesome. Gonna put that aside, we click next. And the next step, my robot is saying to add some honey, but because we're making this vegan, we're going to add a little maple syrup instead of honey. But if you don't have maple syrup in your house, you can also use agave nectar. You can also use coconut nectar. Oh, Jacqueline says hi to Mango and Harley. I'll bring them on camera later, I promise. This is a quick recipe, so we'll have a lot of time to chat and catch up and do some Q&A uh, stuff at the end, all right? So here we are adding half an ounce of maple syrup. Yummy. I love maple syrup. I, and if you get maple syrup, guys, 100% pure maple syrup. That's what you want to buy. The old maple syrups have like high fructose corn syrup and a bunch of added preservatives and stuff. You want to make sure you get 100% pure. 
Okay, so we click next. And the next thing is to add some fajita seasoning. So I actually homemade my fajita seasoning. You can just combine um, a couple different uh, spices together that you probably already have in your cabinets. So um, if you can't find fajita seasoning or you just don't have it in your house, um, if you uh, check out my recipe details on the site, um, I also included how you can make your own homemade fajita seasoning, okay? All right, so we're gonna add a tablespoon of that. There we go. And now my robot is saying to add an eighth a teaspoon of salt. But those of you who know me know that I normally skip the salt step because there's so much flavor in this recipe and all the other recipes that I make with you guys that we don't need salt, all right? So wherever you can just reduce your sodium in intake in your life. What do I say? Do it, that's right. Hi, Eddie Rivera. Hi, Moen. What's up, guys? Now, if you have tried traditional coleslaw, comment in the chats. And, uh, and if you haven't tried Texas coleslaw, let me know. And because this one is way more flavorful, it's way better than the traditional. I promise you guys are gonna love it. And you can just, after you make it, you can store it in your fridge for a little bit until you're ready to head to your cookout. And then you can just bring it and serve it cold or serve it you know, at room temperature and it stays great for a long time. All right? Okay, hi, Eddie Rivera, how are you? Where are you tuning in from? Guys, happy 4th of July weekend. So like I said, I'm gonna skip the salt step because we don't need it. And instead we're gonna add a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. That is the next step, okay? My robot says one eighth a teaspoon, but feel free to just, you know, do it to taste, all right? And then I click next. We're gonna put the top on. And we are going to just mix all that stuff together, okay? That is our like flavor base right there. We got a lot of cool flavors being combined and mixed and that's going to be what makes the cabbage taste so good. All right, guys, normally I don't like eating vegetables raw, but when you add all of this awesome flavor, it makes it taste amazing. So this is a great excuse to add more raw veggies to your diet, okay? All right, so the next step is to add the green cabbage. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you what this looks like, okay? We just combined all of that yumminess. Okay, so our flavor base is ready. So we're gonna do seven ounces of green cabbage. And here my robot is weighing it as I put it in. And I click next. And we're gonna add one apple, all right guys? Just one apple is the next step. Here we go. And as I click next, we're putting the top on. If you wanna show you this real quick, here we have the apple and the cabbage. All right guys? Jacqueline said that cabbage looks beautiful. Yes, nothing like fresh veggies, guys. Cabbage is so good for you, and, uh, and it's nice and filling too, which is awesome. Your mom, Lynn Chamberlain. What about, what about your mom, Marie? Is she watching with us? Is she making it? You tried traditional coleslaw. Well, and this has no mayonnaise in it too, which is awesome. There's so many other yummy flavors, you know, between the lime juice and the honey and the cilantro and the fajita seasoning. There's so many awesome flavors going into this that you don't need it to add anything else. You don't need mayo. All right. I love coleslaw, but it's always hit or miss. Hard to find a recipe to trust. Once you try this one, I'm telling you, you'll be in shock. I brought this recipe to, uh, to, my, to my family's cookout a couple days ago, and every single person there loved it. And whether, it's, whether they know it's vegan or not, it just, you know, they don't even care. It tastes amazing. That's why this is a great recipe to bring to all these summer parties you guys are going to this summer, all right? Hi, Anton. Hi, DJ Kumash. DJ Kumash is here. Are you tuning in from London or India? Where are you at, Kumash? I miss you. Sending you lots of love. We used to make music together back when I lived in India years ago. Hi, your milp. 
Oh, your mom is watching Marie. That's awesome. Well, hello to Maria's mom. Welcome. Welcome to uh, my uh, weekly plant-based cooking class. I'm Cheryl Martinez from Beginner Cooking, and I'm so honored and so happy to have you here. I love your daughter very, very, very much. She always makes my live classes more fun. Oh, thank you, Marie. Marie said she invited a few of her friends. Awesome. And uh, guys, if you want to click the share button and invite people to this class, please do that. I would, I would love it if you guys brought your family, your friends, whoever you want to eat healthier and live kinder, or whoever you want to inspire to possibly try a plant-based diet with you, click the share button, invite them to join our classes. We do this every single week, same place, same time, 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Facebook Live. All right, guys? And you can RSVP on uh, VeganerCooking.com. Um, and I'll send you a reminder before I go live every week, all right? If you wanna RSVP, I'm happy to send you a reminder so you don't miss out when we're actually live, okay? Wad Wahi, hello! Kumash is in London right now, awesome. How is it over there, love? Are you guys in quarantine? All right, guys, so we're gonna move on into the next part of the recipe, which is chopping the cabbage, the apples, together with that awesome, flavorful mixture that we had, okay? So I'm gonna turn the knob and we are chopping away. All right, I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Look at that, guys, look at that. <gasps> The smells are amazing coming out of this right now. I'm telling you, you have never tasted cabbage this good before. All right, so we are going to transfer this to a bowl, but we're not done yet. We're still gonna add the red cabbage and a couple other yummy things, all right? But for now, we're just gonna transfer this to the bowl because we wanna make room for all of the rest of the stuff that we're gonna be adding to this salad, all right? So I'm not sure how big your food chopper is or your food processor, but you don't want to put more ingredients in there than it can handle because you want it to be able to chop everything properly, you know? All right, so I'm going to show you what this looks like after I take this out so you guys can see where we're at, okay? If you're just tuning in, we are making Texas coleslaw. It's one of my favorite cookout recipes. You can get the recipe at coleslaw.beginnercooking.com and you can make this anytime. Anytime you're going to a cookout, this is the recipe I recommend you bring because it is foolproof. You can make it in a matter of minutes and everybody loves it. Vegans, non-vegans, everyone, all right? So you can't go wrong with this Texas coleslaw recipe at your cookouts this summer, all right? Um, Marie says that her mom loves eating healthy. Hopefully she gets inspired. Awesome. How do I feel in my gut? On the inside, I feel much healthier, right? Yes, absolutely. You know, I used to, um, I used to suffer from something called functional dyspepsia, um, which, uh, which gave me a lot of, you know, um, stomach pain, um, a lot of bloating, just a lot of general, just discomfort in my gut. Um, and uh, since I transitioned to a plant-based diet, um, I, I barely even noticed it anymore. It's, it's basically, it's basically um, pretty much cured it for the most part. And, uh, and I, I've only been vegan since January and I noticed those changes right away. So um, absolutely a plant-based diet can, can do work wonders for your, for your gut, for your heart, for your cholesterol. Um, there's so many health benefits. And if you guys wanna learn more about the health benefits of a plant-based diet, I recommend a, a couple films on Netflix that are actually really, really enjoyable films. One of them is called What the Health? The other one is called Cowspiracy and the other one is called The Game Changers, all right? They're all really, really fun and interesting and educational films that you can watch on Netflix right now. Highly recommend them if you're interested in uh, learning all the health benefits, all right, guys? So our uh, next step in the recipe is to add our red cabbage, all right, guys? We're gonna pop in our red cabbage now. Are you with me? Are we all on the same step? Is anyone making this with us live right now? Or are you guys just chilling and gonna make it later? When is your next cookout? Did you guys go partying last night? Did you guys see some fireworks, huh? All 
All right, so we added our red cabbage, and now we're going to add four ounces of carrots. We're going to add some fresh carrots in next, all right? And that's going to also add some nice crunchiness to this coleslaw. Here we go. There's our carrots. I click next. And my robot's saying to add some, add some red onion. Personally, um, I, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't like to eat red onion raw too much. It doesn't agree with me too well, so I'm gonna skip the red onion. But if you love raw onion and you wanna add that to this recipe, by all means, you are welcome to. So I'm gonna skip the onion. And now we're gonna add the pecans, my favorite part. I love the way pecans taste in this recipe. So if you don't have a nut allergy, I definitely recommend not omitting this, okay? But of course it's optional. Um, if you have a nut allergy or if you're concerned that someone at your cookout might have a nut allergy, then you can simply leave the pecans out. All right, guys, so we're gonna pop these in next. Hi, Mike Graff. Jacqueline says, I wish I was making this live. Maybe I'll make tomorrow. Now I'm craving coleslaw. Jacqueline, I promise you, when you taste this, you're going to be like, damn, Cheryl. <laughs> Hi, El Breezy Baby. Marie says, I'll make it later. I love salads. Awesome. Let me know when you guys make it. Send me a picture if you do. Tag at Beginner Cooking, and I will repost it if you make it. All right, guys, we're adding two ounces of pecans. Probably almost all of this. Yeah, perfect. And I click next, and I'm gonna show you what this looks like real quick before we blend. So we have the carrots, the red cabbage, and the pecans. That's what we are chopping together right now, okay? If your food chopper can handle it, if it's really big and it can handle chopping everything all at once, fine, but I think it's better this way to, to separate it, all right? And that's what my robot chef recommends as well. So we are putting the top on, and we are going to chop all of that together in three seconds. That's how fast. I love that I don't have to sh chop anything anymore thanks to him. So I turn the knob, and then done. All right, guys, wait till you see. We are almost done. Did you see how quick and easy this recipe was? So quick. So easy, and this adds some really nice fun color to um, to this salad as well. This coleslaw, I mean, you guys know I love things that are really colorful because it's all about eating your colors, you know? Things that are colorful and bright um, are just more appealing to your eye and your taste buds, all right? So now um, we are gonna transfer this mixture to the bowl with our um, green cabbage. And then I'm gonna mix all that together and we are done, guys. That was the entire recipe. It was that easy. It was that easy, guys. So I'm gonna pop this in real quick. I'm gonna mix it together and then I'm gonna show you what we made. Super simple, super simple. Every single recipe that I make with you guys live, I give you my promise that not only are they super delicious, but they are super easy to make. I know that when a lot of people do recipe searches on the net, um, they end up coming across these really complicated recipes that just kind of just make you, just turn you off and make you not even want to try because it either takes too long or you need too many things. Um, and uh, that's why I've been really trying to focus on making sure that every recipe that I post on the site for you guys is really, um, really quick and easy um, and really flavorful and healthy, of course. And we are almost done mixing this and then I'm gonna show you guys the finished product, okay? Here we go. And again, like I said, you guys can put this in your fridge until you are ready to head to your cookout and then you can bring it. Look at how pretty, guys. Doesn't this look gorgeous? All the colors, eat your colors. See how pretty? Are you guys hungry? Are you guys hungry? Do you want some of this coleslaw right now? Am I putting you in the mood for coleslaw? Marie says, I will have my family try. I wish to make all my loved ones healthy. That is so beautiful, Marie. That is so beautiful of you. And I know that your family is really going to appreciate that too. Hi, what's up, 8569? Hi, Steffi, Sarah. 
Ooh, pecans and coleslaw, that rocks. Yes, it really does. You know, and, and I, like I said, I can't really take credit for this recipe. I find out almost all of my recipes inside his database. He has 50,000 recipes preloaded in here via touchscreen and he's uh, a, like a, having like a smart kitchen. So more and more recipes are being updated in his database every single day. Um, he connects via Wi-Fi. He, he does multi-level cooking. He can cook up to four things at the same time. So he's really, really helped me go vegan, like tremendously, tremendously. All right, guys, take a look at this coleslaw. So now that we have finished the recipe, just like that, super quick today, um, I'm, uh, I wanna open this up to a Q&A. If you guys have any questions about a plant-based diet or about, um, about your transition, or if you wanna know about my transition, or if you're struggling with anything, if you have any, you know, what are your bar barrier foods for transitioning, I'll help you come up with some great alternatives. Any questions that you have about a plant-based diet, feel free to ask me now. I'm an open book. I'm here to share everything that I learned with you guys and, uh, and help you and help you try it out. And again, I have a free 30-day vegan challenge available on my website, veganercooking.com. It connects with a mobile app where you can track your progress daily inside the app so you can really go and see the benefits that you got out of it for trying it for 30 days straight and um and guys i know i know transitioning to a plant-based diet is hard i do trust me i do it took me a long time to transition myself now i wish i did it sooner of course but uh but i was vegetarian for eight years before i finally went vegan the beginning of this year now um after seeing all of the benefits I just, you know, of course I wish I did it sooner, but I'm gonna be honest with you. Being, choosing a plant-based diet is a choice that you have to make every single day of your life because there are always gonna be temptations. There's always gonna be times where you are around something and you wish you had it or you're second guessing yourself or your decision. And I just want you all to know that every single day that you choose a plant-based diet, a plant-based diet, you need to give yourself a pat on the back. You need to be really, really proud of yourself because um, I, I went to a cookout the other day, the other day that I brought this Texas coleslaw. And um, even though my recipe was amazing and everyone loved it, every single, single other dish at this cookout, I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat any of it because none of it was vegan. Mind you, it all looked delicious. It was all stuff I used to eat, right? They had mac and cheese, they had cornbread, um, they had chicken, they had cheesecake, it was, you know, apple pie, like everything, like so much, so much amazing food. And, um, and I couldn't touch anything except for what I brought to the party. And what I wanna tell you guys is that, um, out of sight, out of mind, is the best thing that you can do for yourself when trying a plant-based diet. Do not surround yourself with temptation. Instead, surround yourself with really, really yummy plant-based food so you won't be missing other things. And if you are in a situation where you are around that stuff, remind yourself that that mac and cheese that's right there that you can't have in that moment, you can go make that mac and cheese for yourself tomorrow, vegan. That's what I did when I saw it at the cookout and I had a little, you know, a smidgen of a sad moment that I couldn't eat it. What I did was I told myself, you know what? I'm gonna have another serving of my coleslaw and tomorrow I'm gonna, I'm gonna make myself a really delicious, yummy mac and cheese recipe. And that's what I did. And uh, it, it's, in, it's in my fridge. If you guys want, I'll even show you it. It came out amazing. If you wanna try the mac and cheese recipe, you can, um, it, it's on veganercooking.com. Just click on easy recipes, click on meals, and uh, it's there, it's right there. And it's the best mac and cheese recipe I've ever tasted. And there's so many healthy, ingredients that go into it. So it's you're eating mac and cheese, but you're feeling amazing when you eat it. And I promise you, it tastes like real cheese. So when you have the alternative, you don't miss the things as much. But when it's right in front of you and you can't eat it then, it's hard, all right? I, I admit it, it's still it's still hard. It's, it's gonna be hard for a really long time, maybe forever. Who knows if there will ever be a day where I'm in front of an old food watching everyone else eat it and accept me, you know? Who knows if, uh, if I'll ever get over that? But, um, but the good news is, is that when you're in that position, 
remind yourself how proud you are to be the only one there that had the courage to say no, that had the courage to choose kindness, that had the courage to choose your health over whatever that temptation was, right? And just remind yourself, if you're at a cookout this summer and you see some cornbread and you can't have it because they probably made it with milk, know that you can still eat cornbread. You can still make a vegan version of cornbread. Tell me everything you used to love and I promise you there is a vegan version for it and you can make it and you can eat it guilt-free and your, and your belly isn't gonna be in pain because of it and your health isn't gonna be hurting because of it and animals aren't gonna be dying because of it. So um, that's what I had to remind myself when I had a little bit of a weak, sad moment at, at, uh, at this cookout. And, and I think for me, it was so hard because I have been in quarantine for so many months, cooking so many yummy things with my robot for all these months that I kind of forgot what it was like to be around um, non-vegan food because I was surrounding myself with so much yummy plant-based meals all day, every day that I wasn't missing anything. So it just kind of gave me a little kick back into reality for everyone else that's trying a plant-based diet for the first time is in the beginning and is still around, you know, old family and friends and old restaurants where they're still around things that they used to eat um, and watching people eat stuff in front of them. Know that, um, know that it's okay to be feeling that way and instead flip it into feeling proud for yourself that you are the one that is making that choice every single day of your life. You're making that choice. And, um, and you know what guys, if you can accomplish something like, something like being a, 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 eating a fully plant-based diet permanently, if you can accomplish something like that, because that is really huge, it kind of gives you this sense of like, well, I can do anything now. If I master this, I can do anything. What's next for me in my list of accomplishments in life? Because this is so hard. So many people in the world can't do this. They cannot transition to a plant-based diet. They don't even want to try. They don't even want to think about it. You know, they just can't do it. So the fact that those of you who are trying, who are succeeding, who are getting there, I mean, that is such a big accomplishment that you need to be so proud of that, you know, just um, acknowledge that, acknowledge that and be thankful. So instead, when you're at that cookout and you're seeing everyone eat all the stuff that you can't, be like, wow, look at me, look what I did, look what I accomplished and be really, really, really proud of yourself. All right, guys, that was my, that was my two cents that I wanted to make sure I share with you guys today. For those of you just tuning in, we made this delicious Texas coleslaw recipe. You can get the recipe details for this at uh, coleslaw.beginnercooking.com. It's really quick and easy. It's the best coleslaw I've ever tasted in my entire life. And it is my favorite recipe to bring to cookouts because everybody loves it and it's just so easy to share. And it looks pretty, right? You guys know I love stuff that looks pretty. All right, let me get back into the chats for a little bit because I know I've been babbling for a little bit. Um, Jacqueline says that's great advice. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm glad you appreciate it. And Marie says, when I was a child, I already felt in my gut I did not like meat when I was a little girl. I never ate my whole dish. Yeah, you know, Marie, I kind of always knew that I wanted to do something to help animals. And I never really knew what my calling was going to be for that. You know, I would try to, um, you know, donate what I could to sanctuaries and different foundations. But you know, once I realized a plant-based diet is kind of like the biggest way that I could help and helping other people do this plant-based diet, it's kind of a win-win because not only am I helping the animals, but I'm also helping people be healthier, right? So that's why I feel like this was, was the best decision I could have made to help, you know, fulfill this, this dream I had of, um, of helping animals my entire life. So I hear you, Marie. Sharon says, always bring chocolate at a cookout. Is the chocolate gonna melt if you bring it to the cookout, Sharon? <laughs> she says, thank you for your honesty. Nothing worthwhile ever comes easy. That's, that's a really, really good point, Sharon. All, all really, really great things in your life take hard work, 
take dedication and it's not going to be easy but you know what the reward means so much more that way the rewards that i have felt internally and externally since i've transitioned far outweigh those few few minutes of you know of temptation that i that i had at that cookout the other day far outweigh they do not compare do not even come close to comparing. Hi, Connections. Hi, Joshua. Hi, Oliver. Happy 4th of July weekends, everyone. Hi, Fazir. Mods, what's up? Marie says, I was encouraged to switch my diet since my dad passed away at a young age because of bad eating habits. Wow. That's really inspirational there, Marie. Um, I hope your father is resting in peace, and I hope that he's really proud of you for this transition that you made in his honor. Jacqueline says, well said, Sharon. And Sharon says, you could always drink. Yeah, that's true. That's true. If you're at a cookout and there's not enough food for you, that's okay. Because you can always have the alcohol. Yes. And that frozen lemonade, that red, white, and blue frozen lemonade recipe that I posted yesterday. Um, if you want to uh, spike that with a little vodka or something, go right ahead. And that will taste amazing. I just wasn't sure if I should write that on my website. But I'll definitely say it to you here live. Hi, Natasha. How are you? Jacqueline says, thank you so much for that. We all need to face challenges head on and never, ever stop finding ways for ourselves to improve. But yep, you're right, sweetheart. You are so right. Marie says, it takes a lot of heart and passion to be able to stick to greatness. A lot of discipline. Kudos. Yes, kudos to all of us who have made the decision to choose a plant-based diet every single day. Congratulations to you all and congratulations to those of you who are thinking of transitioning because that is step one, is just thinking about wanting to do it. It was years that I thought about wanting to do it. Years I thought about wanting to become a vegetarian and then eight years I thought about going from a vegetarian to a vegan. All right guys, so don't feel bad about anything know that you can transition at your own pace you can cut out different foods at your own pace and if you want to try my 30-day vegan challenge just as a little jump start to just see how you feel and to really get a an opportunity to notice the benefits and see if that inspires you to do it longer um, my vegan challenge will always be 100 percent free and you can try that anytime at veganercooking.com all right, does anyone have any last minute questions? I'm probably gonna end the chat in a couple minutes unless you guys wanna talk about anything else. Marie says, congrats to everyone. Tap yourselves on the back. Yes, absolutely. You deserve to pat yourself on the back and be proud of yourself every single day you make this choice to live a healthier, kinder lifestyle. It's not easy, but it is worth it. The rewards far outweigh what you think you were giving up. And like I said, even though I gave up those foods that day at that party, I made them for me the very next day. So I didn't give it up. I just had to put it on hold before I could eat it because I had to make the vegan version, right? And that's okay. And it's okay to acknowledge, you know, that, oh, look at everyone eating this and I can't eat it. It's okay. It's okay to feel that way. Don't feel bad. Feel proud, all right? Marie is uh, inviting some friends, it looks like. Thank you for sharing, sweetheart. Do I buy my foods at a bio store or farmer's market? You know, I actually use the Whole Foods delivery um, service. Right in the Amazon app, you can click on Whole Foods and you can just add everything to your cart right there and they do free delivery within two hours. I'm not sure if they do that wherever you guys are located, but um, but it but it, it works for me in New York City and I also was able to do it for my family out here on Long Island. So um, I, I'm pretty sure that, you know, a company like Whole Foods is doing that pretty widespread. So I highly recommend, especially in a time right now where COVID cases keep on rising rising and rising, I recommend staying away from the physical stores if you can and just ordering delivery and then using, you know, some, um, 
some sanitizing wipes to just wipe down your your packages and your boxes and stuff before you put it away um and i think that is the safest way for everyone to be food shopping right now so we're not in stores touching things touching all the produce and stuff that everyone else has touched all day long and then maybe accidentally rubbing your face you want to avoid that right so if there's free grocery delivery in your area take advantage of that especially during time right now and again if you're going to cookouts and stuff not only bring your own plant-based dish to, in case there isn't any food for you, but please wear your mask, guys. Continue to wear your masks because you always want to protect yourself and your health and protect others, right? You wanna have a good time? Go and have a good time. But, um, but stay safe while you're doing it, all right? Even for fruits and veggies. Um, lately, yes, lately, yes. I just make sure I buy organic. But, um, but I used to go to the farmer's markets um, every now and then in my area before the quarantine. But, uh, but in the winter, it's hard to do that. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and in the quarantine, it's even harder to do that. So uh, like I said, my top recommendation right now is, is delivery services. Jacqueline says, I'm very proud of your strength and discipline with caring for your body and animals everywhere. Back to the recipe. How do you eat coleslaw? Just plain or with crackers or pickles? I'm curious. You know, you can eat this. You can eat this just plain, just like this. You can put it as a side dish on something. Um, I made a, a nice couscous dish also when I went to that cookout. So I had it on the side of some, of some couscous, which is really yummy. But actually, if you want to take some chips and use this um, as kind of like, um, like a little chip dip kind of thing, that would taste really, really good too. You could even put it as a topping on top of like a plant-based burger, like a veggie burger or Beyond burger. You know, if, if you wanna, you know, um, if they're doing like a barbecue and you and you have access, access to some burgers to bring to, to your cookout as well, you can throw this as a topping on that and that's gonna add some awesome flavor to your burgers. So there's so much you can, it tastes so good in its own right that you can eat it alone, but yes, it would taste great with chips. Yes, it would taste great as a side dish to anyone else's meal. And yes, it would also taste great as a topping on anything you put on the grill, all right? Hi, Goon, get em. How are you, sweetheart? Happy 4th of July weekend, everyone. You guys like my hat? My dad gave me this hat. Oh, I wanna end it showing you guys Mango one more time. Mango, Mango baby, come here, my love. Come here, Mango. Oh, he's right here at my feet. <laughs> my little baby was right here at my feet and I didn't even know. Everyone say happy 4th of July to Mango. This is my nephew. My nephew is visiting me. I haven't seen him since before the quarantine and I'm so happy he is here. And I'm so happy that he is having his uh, five minutes of fame right now. Make sure you guys follow him at Mango Woof. And if you wanna learn more about my robot chef over here, I am doing free demos, free demos for as long as I possibly can. So take advantage of that now. You can sign up at beginnercooking.com. Just click on robot chef. And if you want to see all the other fabulous things I've made with this thing, you can follow him on social media at my robot chef. All right, guys, cute name, Mango. Yeah, just my little Mango baby. And again, excuse his quarantine haircut. He doesn't really like it, but that's okay. We just, uh, we got to keep him, um, his hair was growing really, really long and it's getting hot out. So we just want to make sure it doesn't get too hot in the summer, right? Look at that face. Look at that face, guys. Look at that face. Is that not the cutest face you've ever seen in your life? He's the sweetest puppy ever. It's so funny right on my feet. I know I'm calling him. He's right there tapping me. Uh, all right, you guys. I wish everyone um, has a very safe and very fun 4th of July weekend. I hope you guys make this Texas coleslaw recipe and bring it to your cookouts and send me pictures and come back and tell me how much everyone loved it. And uh, don't forget to share this video with your family and friends that you want to inspire to eat, a, eat healthier and live kinder. And I hope to see you guys every single Sunday. I go live every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time at facebook.com slash Cheryl.tv. And if you want to RSVP, I will send you a reminder before I go live. You can just go to rsvp.beginnercooking.com um, and if you want to get that reminder. All right, guys? Yes, Marie, he is on Instagram. Jacqueline says the haircut is terrible. <laughs> I know, but he still looks cute. He still looks adorable, even with the bad, bad haircut. But when you see his Instagram, you get to see what he looks like with his really long poodle hair. 
<laughs> yeah, he's a teacup poodle. He's a toy poodle. It's my baby. He's the best. All right, guys. I love you guys. And uh, I keep spreading that plant-based love, everybody. Keep spreading it. Keep inspiring others to join you on this magical journey that we are all on together because, like I said, it is worth it. It is absolutely worth anything that you think you have to give up. The, the rewards, the fact that you are saving animals, that you're saving the planet, and that you are improving your health tremendously. I promise you, all of that outweighs just changing a couple things in your diet. All right, guys? So just remind yourselves of that. If I can do it, you can do it. All these people are doing it. We can do it. If we support each other, we can do it. All right, guys? So happy 4th of July weekends. It was so much fun hanging with you all today. Everyone say goodbye to Mingo. And I will see you guys next Sunday, all right? Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.